Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Welcome to The Empowering Neurologist. Today I'd like to talk about something called bacterial diversity. Well, what does that mean? It means having a really good array of different bacteria living within the gut. You know, uh, when we consume things like antibiotics, other medications, when we have a diet that's really not uh, up to snuff, too much sugar, too many uh, carbohydrates, not enough fiber, we tend to lose the diversity of bacteria that live within us. And that is not without consequence. We really want to have a lot of bacterial diversity, a lot of different uh, species of organisms living within us to, to really carry on that symphony. You know, when you have an orchestra and you suddenly delete uh, the string instruments, you don't get music that is very pleasing. Same thing in the gut. We really re, uh, rely upon having a whole array of organisms to maintain the gut lining, uh, to keep inflammation in balance, to help regulate our immunity. So food choices play a big role, no question. Other lifestyle issues are very important as well. But what we haven't heard until recently is the fact that exercise really turns out to be a very important player in terms of increasing or at least maintaining the diversity of organisms, of bacteria that live within the gut. Let's take a look at a new study. This is a report from the journal Microbiome. It was just published. And in it, these researchers decided to compare cardiorespiratory fitness in terms of how it could predict um, uh, the diversity of bacteria within the gut. We know in this next slide that reduced diversity, in other words, not as many different organisms in the gut, this situation is associated with autoimmune conditions, with metabolic conditions, and even with inflammatory disease. And the authors uh, call our attention to the fact that we see decreased uh, diversity in diabetes, also in obesity. Uh, other researchers have found reduction in diversity in Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, colorectal cancer, autism, inflammatory bowel disease, and really many, many immune issues, many inflammatory issues as well. Now, what these researchers did was they first, they did an analysis of the fecal microbiota. In other words, they took 39 healthy individuals who were of similar age. They measured their body mass index. In other words, you know, how much fat they had. They looked at their diets and they measured the array of organisms found within their microbiome, in their gut bacteria. They also, on the second part of this slide, looked at what is called their VO2 peak. And this is, you know, when you see people exercising and they're wearing a mask to, uh, in a laboratory. This is how we measure uh, peak oxygen uptake. And it's a very strong, uh, it's actually called the gold standard measurement of what is called cardiorespiratory fitness. Now the findings of the study were really quite remarkable and they are plotted here on this graph. On the left side, we see species diversity. The higher we go on the left side, the more diverse the organisms are that live within the gut. And as we move to the right, we have higher levels of peak VO2, meaning better cardiorespiratory fitness. And I think it's very clear here uh, that the more uh, fit these individuals were, the more diverse were their species of organisms within their gut. So their conclusion was that uh, the diversity of the organisms was strongly related to the peak VO2, the oxygen utilization. In other words, there, that the cardiorespiratory fitness of an individual was in fact the most important uh, determinant in terms of the diversity of the bacteria living within the gut. Beyond that, uh, they also found that there was a decreased LPS in the individuals who had high cardiorespiratory fitness. What does that mean? LPS is a marker of inflammation and it's a marker of bowel permeability. The stronger was the, uh, the rather the higher the uh, VO2 peak, in other words, the, the more physically fit an individual was, then the lower was the LPS level. LPS again uh, being a marker of uh, inflammation. 
They also found that butyrate, a short chain fatty acid, was higher in those who had the highest level of VO2, meaning the best, the highest respiratory, cardiorespiratory fitness. Butyrate is a very important short chain fatty acid that's associated with reduction of inflammatory processes and also even has uh, anti-cancer activity and has a role to play in regulating energy expenditure, metabolism, uh, the leakiness of the gut, and even appetite control. So this may well explain why individuals who are involved in cardiorespiratory uh, fitness or involved in exercise uh, generally are much more able to control their food choices. So this is a very, very interesting uh, study, isn't it? It shows that the higher levels of cardiorespiratory fitness correlated with microbial diversity, which is what we want, with lower levels of LPS, which is involved in inflammation and leakiness of the gut, and also had higher levels of this short chain fatty acid called butyrate, which we know has a variety of effects in the body, as I mentioned, but also acts as a gene expression regulator. Now, to be fair, this was a correlative study. It did not, it, it simply showed a correlation between higher levels of uh, physical fitness and bacterial diversity. It didn't necessarily mean that if you engage in more physical activity and become more fit, that your bacterial diversity will increase and all the other good things are going to happen. But then again, it, it didn't mean that that wasn't what was going to happen. So my recommendation, my interpretation from this research is that it pays to get yourself in shape from a cardiorespiratory perspective by doing aerobic exercise, because I believe that we see uh, that this will increase bacterial diversity, a lower LPS, and also increase butyrate. I know it's a lot of science, but uh, the mission here is to really uh, help you understand that there are a lot of important reasons why we should continue to aerobically exercise. And now we see a powerful a relationship in terms of what's going on in the gut and therefore in the rest of your body. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.